New York Giants offensive lineman Nick Gates joins the podcast today to talk about the teens, the future, and a whole bunch of other stuff, including answering some of the questions submitted via our YouTube channel. That's coming up next on the Locked on Giants podcast. You are Locked on Giants, your daily New York Giants podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode of the Locked on Giants podcast is brought to you by Ultimate Football GM. Ever dreamed of becoming an NFL GM and managing your football franchise? Then this game is definitely for you. To download the game, just visit ultimate-gm.com or look it up on the app stores. Our listeners get a 100% free boost to their franchise when using the promo code Locked On. that's all caps by the way, in the game. Again, that promo code is Locked On. And that website is ultimate-gm.com. Hello, New York Giant fans, and welcome to another edition of the Locked On Giants podcast, part of the Locked On podcast family, your team every day. I'm Patricia Traina, your host. And on today's Locked On Giants podcast, I have for you an interview with the one and only Nick Gates. That's right. I went to Nick Gates. I asked him if he would come on the pod. He was most gracious in coming on the pod with me. So we talked for about 20 minutes about a variety of different topics from the team's progress to Daniel Jones's growth to the offensive line to his future, as well as, you know, talking a little bit about his journey back from a horrific leg injury. So I'm really excited that Nick was able to come on and join me on the podcast. Now, unfortunately, Nick was not able to appear on video. He was only able to call in and, uh, you know, that's going to happen at times. I try to be accommodating to the guests that come on the podcast. So um, I do have a picture of Nick that I'm going to put up every time he talks. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, the video is not going to be much to look at, but uh, hopefully you'll enjoy the interview, the audio part of it. I know I had a good time talking to Nick, as always, and I hope you will as, as well. So without any further ado... I present to you my interview with Nick Gates, New York Giants offensive lineman. All right, Giant fans, we are joined by New York Giants offensive lineman, Nick Gates, who is calling in by a phone because he's got so many things he's trying to wrap up as he prepares, unfortunately, for a long off season. But uh, Nick, first off, thank you for coming on with me. And, and listen, congratulations on not only coming back from a horrific injury, but also, you know, the Giants, I know you guys fell short of, of your goals, but, uh, you know, you guys it, really made a lot of progress, I think, as a team. Uh, yeah, thank you for having me on, first of all. And then, uh, yeah, no, it's been a long journey, and uh, I'm glad to be a part of this team and uh, everything they've done this year. So uh, I think we've come a long way. We still have a long, long way to go, but we've uh, we've come a long way. All right, Nick, let's – you know, just backtrack a little bit. I mean, you had that that awful injury. You you endured multiple surgeries. You never gave up. You, you know, and I'm sure there were times where you just maybe questioned what's going on. You know, what does my future uh, hold for myself? Can you just briefly summarize that journey? And at what point did you feel you turned the corner and you said, "Hey, I can get back on this field"? Yeah. Um... Yeah, no, it was a long journey for sure. Uh, there was definitely a lot of ups and downs and highs and lows. Um, there was a lot of time, not a lot. There was a couple times in the, you know, the process where I didn't really think I was going to get back. And I thought I was going to retire and, you know, kind of be done playing football. But, you know, the people in my corner kept pushing me and kept getting me, you know, just to go and, put, you know, just keep moving forward every day and, you know, not focus on that and just focus on, you know, getting healthy and getting back to, where I think I could get back to and, you know, kind of all worked out. What does the game of football mean to you? I mean, because obviously it had to mean a lot to you, I would think, that you put yourself through what you put yourself through. Yeah, no, football means a lot to me. I mean, what I, other than, I mean, other than how it pays my bills, it's, you know, I, I love, I just love being able to go out there every day and, you know, do, do that for a job. Like what, what, what other job in the world you could do that? Like, it's like the best job in the world. Like there's nothing else you could do that's close to that. So, you know, I wanted to push to get back to that and just, you know, just show my teammates that I could, you know, come back from something and, you know, maybe 
be an inspiration to somebody or one person in the world that, you know, might help them overcome their journey or something they've been going through. What did you learn about yourself? I mean, adversity, you know, they teach, it teaches us something maybe we didn't know about ourselves. What did you take out of the whole experience? Um, I probably think the biggest thing I learned is just patience, just learning to be patient with myself and with others and just with, just with healing and stuff like that. Like, I really wasn't a super patient person before this and, you know, I, I had patience, but like they ran really thin very fast. So I think that this just kind of like, you know, made me like take a step back and be like, Hey, you gotta, you know, slow down sometimes. And, you know, you gotta work with everybody else and you just gotta be patient. Now, Nick, let's talk about the Giants team this year. I mean, admittedly, a lot of people on the outside of the building had questions about how far the team could go. You know, what would it be like? Because you had new coaching staffs, new players, you know, just knew everything, basically. And, you know, you were on the side, obviously, finishing up your rehab, trying to get back. From your bird's eye view, what struck you as the biggest difference that made you think, gee, maybe this could be, you know, something special here? Um, I'd probably say Coach Daves. He's uh he was a big aspect of how, how far we went this year and you know, being able to go that far. I think he uh he came in and did a good job and told us like all just like be ourselves and you know, don't be anybody different than what you what you are, you know, show your personalities and just you know, be you. So I think that uh, a lot of guys took that to heart. And like, you know, we had a good locker room this year. I feel like everybody was their self. I mean, you had guys like Hottie in there that were, you know, yelling and screaming all the time. Not screaming, but, you know, you know how Hottie is. He's just Hottie. And then we have guys like, I mean, like Daniel, you know, he's, he's he talks when he has to talk. And, you know, he leads, and but he leads by example and things like that. So it's like everybody was doing their own thing. Not their own thing. Everybody was showing their own personalities. And I think it just worked. Like, Everybody in the locker room enjoyed coming to work every day. Like, I think this has probably been one of my funnest seasons, like playing sports since I was probably either in high school or younger. So just like just being with the team and the guys, and it was just it was just fun. It was a fun time. Hey, Giant fans, have you ever wanted to be an NFL GM because you think you can do it better than the guys that are doing the job? Well, there's a game out there that will allow you to put your skills to the test. That's Ultimate Football GM, where you have the final say over every aspect of your roster. Among the decisions you can make include hiring the coaches and coordinators, making trades, drafting, and free agency. All this done in a challenging and realistic game world. Ultimate Football GM is completely free and playable offline. You can play on the go as you want, when you want. We at the Locked On NFL Network played this game, and we had an absolute blast. We know you and your friends will as well. So go ahead and get started. Locked on Giants podcast listeners get a 100% free boost to their franchise when using the promo code Locked On in the game store. To download the game, just visit ultimate-gm.com or look it up in the app stores. That's ultimate-gm.com. And that promo code is Locked On, all caps. Ultimate Football GM. Start your dynasty today. In terms of, you know, obviously having fun on the job is important, but can you talk about the coaching? Let's let's talk about, you know, and, and not just, you know, Dave's and, and Kafka, but let's talk about Bobby Johnson and Sperano. I mean, because they were your position coaches, you know, talk about the job they did with you as well as with the offensive line. Yeah. Um... I got to say it's Tony. Uh, he helped me out a lot. Just be at the beginning of the year when Bobby was busy working with like uh, you know all the guys that are trying to going to play. You know, beginning of the year, and Tony, you know, we'd talk and he would help me out with things. And me and him sat next to each other in the back of the room, so we kind of became a little closer than I was with Bobby. But um, I love I love both those guys. They did a really good job this year. I think they let us be who we are. And they were uh, they were like super honest with everybody and like just up front and you know if you had a question about playtime or you had a question about anything and you went to ask them they were going to tell you the truth about it and I think when coaches are like that players can trust them and can uh you know follow that and, and you know keep working with somebody because you know you know you're going to get the, the honest truth about any question you ask and you and you felt that these coaches when you asked a question they gave you a, a totally honest answer yes 100 percent 
You know, we also hear the word culture a lot. I know Dave throws that word around a lot. What, when you look at the culture this year, as opposed to maybe years past that on teams that you've been on, what's the one thing or two things that really stood out to you about, you know, that, that made you think this, this is just, you know, this is it. This is what it could be. Yeah. uh, Everybody wanted to come to work every single day. And I think that's what the culture was like. Dave's changed the culture and everybody wanted to come to work every day. Like there wasn't a day, like I, I woke up and I was like, Oh f- shoot, I got to go to work today. Like there wasn't any of that. I was like, Oh yeah, I got to go to, I got to go have fun today. I got to go to meetings. Like I like where in seasons before, I always had a couple of those days here. Like this, this year, I, I was like happy to go into work every single day. I mean, yeah, ha- winning does help that, but it was also the guys and all the coaches and just being around them. It was just, it was just, it was just different than teams past. You know, there was a patch during the season where you guys had some struggles. You had some adversity. You know, how did the team handle that behind the scenes? I mean, I, I got the impression that everybody kind of kept their chin up and kept the focus. But, you know, what what went on behind the scenes to help you guys over that hump when you guys were, you know, coming out of the bye and then you hit that little losing streak? Yeah, um, I don't really know. We all stayed together. Like, it was a big thing. And, like, we all didn't flinch, like. It's football. Like stuff's gonna go wrong. You're gonna have a rough spot every once in a while, and like you're gonna go down in a little, you know, little uh, slump every once in a while. But we just kept going. We just kept putting one foot in front of the other, and never like stopped to look back to see what was happening. And we just kept learning from you know all our losses and things like that. And, you know, it just just we kept moving forward. We didn't, didn't, didn't flinch. And I think that was the big thing. Is that hard to do though, Nick? To to stay together in in, in hard times. I mean, I know past locker rooms and and I've been covering the team as you know a long time and I've seen situations where things have fallen apart the wheels have come off the track and all of a sudden there's finger pointing I mean so was that hard to do or or was there something that just kind of you know was was there a message that Dave was driving home that you know guys let's stick together yeah he didn't say that specifically but he was just like hey we can't we can't unravel we can't we can't let the ball start rolling like what because then once that thing I feel like it changes the course of everything and the way everybody like reacts to things. And he just, just keep going. Like I think Dave was the big, like, he stayed calm and collected and wasn't screaming and yelling at us and like didn't get everybody like uptight. So like, I think that was, uh, that was a big thing too, to help us not like, you know, get the snowball rolling down the hill. So, cause Dave was calm and collected. Hey, giant fans, the NFL playoffs are heating up. And we're really excited about our new sports betting partner, FanDuel, the number one sports book in America. If you're new to FanDuel, they have so many great features that make betting on sports fun and easy. FanDuel has all your favorite bets from the money line to point spreads to player props. Plus, you can even combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with Same Gay Parlay, all on an app that is safe, secure, and super easy to use. New customers, join today and start with $150 in free bets when you place your first $5 bet. Just sign up at FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, the official sportsbook partner of the NFL. Hey, Giant fans, thanks for making a Locked On Giants podcast your first listen today. For your second listen, check out the Locked On NFL podcast, bringing you local insights you love, to the national spotlight with daily conversations on the biggest NFL stories. Locked on NFL available on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. Now, Nick, I want to, I want to ask you about the offensive line in general, because, you know, for years people have, you know, looked at the offensive line and, and not really had a high opinion of it. Where did you see the biggest growth in the offensive line this year? Um, uh, it's a good one. Um, I think our, our we grew. Sorry, I haven't, I haven't thought about this yet. Um, I think we, it's all around. Like I think our game was offensive line it was definitely better than it this year than it has been in past years. I know we still didn't protect Daniel as well as we wanted to and things like that, but I feel like down the end of the stretch we we were you know protecting and. We uh, we're helping Daniel be able to stick in there a little, like you know, a second or two longer, and getting the ball out a little bit, you know, getting the ball out to people, just like you know, that where 
previous uh, seasons where it was he was getting sacked and things like that. So I'd probably just say just maybe helping Daniel out, be able to like, get, you know, work better and, you know, not be in such a rush, getting the ball snapped and there's two people in his face and, you know, one or one, a second or two, which I feel like was in past years happening. Right, right. How much did the scheme factor into it? I mean, a lot of people talk about the scheme and how modern it was, how much it brought out the, the best in a lot of players. How did that scheme help the offensive line, do you think? Um, I think it helped us a lot because we did a lot of quick passes and tried to get the ball out fast and we tried to run the ball early in the year, which I think helped everything. Um, Kafka and Dave did a good job with play calling and, you know, having a good game plan for mo the majority of the games we played in. Um, but, yeah, no, I think, you know, scheme can change, change the way uh, position groups and teams, you know, win or lose. So, All right. I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you about Daniel's growth. I mean, you've been on the team uh, as long as he has. You've seen him from rookie season to where he is now. Where has he made the biggest strides both on and off the field in terms of his leadership and just his play? Um, I think, the, I mean, the, obviously, to say the turnovers, you know, his turnovers were down this year. and He kept the ball and, you know, didn't, we, we, ended, we ended every drive with almost a kick almost every time. And I didn't really understand beforehand how important that was. I was like, oh, a, a, a pit, like it's, you know, I was like, oh, a turnover here and there is not really going to, you know, be a big deal, but like it actually is because like you end the and the drives and kicks, you're either getting points or you're pinning them back deep where they have to go 75, 80 yards, and it's hard to score when you have to go 75 or 80 yards every time instead of going 40 or 50. You know what I mean? So um probably just just holding the ball and keeping it, you know, in our hands the majority of uh you know the series we had. But I, I mean I knew Daniel had it in him from the get-go, just the way he prepared and the way he showed up every day to work. He just, you knew he wanted to be great. He could be great, so. Tell us something about Daniel that a lot of people don't know, because obviously we see a very stoic player, a very stoic person, doesn't show a whole lot of emotion, doesn't tip off really what he's thinking. What's something that you think people would be surprised to know about Daniel? I'd say he's pretty funny. Like he has some, you know, he says some stuff sometimes that just has you, you rolling and laughing sometimes and, I don't, even, I don't even have, like, a specific example that I can really remember, but, like, he's just he's just a funny dude. Like, if you get to know him, he's just a funny and genuinely nice dude. Interesting. Kind of like how Eli was. It, you know, Eli was was always stoic, and he had a sense of humor that didn't come out really until after he retired. Nick, let's talk real quick about the future of the team as well as your own future. Based on what you saw this season and, and just, you know, knowing what you know about the coaching staff and the scheme and everything like that, what do you think the ceiling is for this team? And, and how good are you feeling about this team moving forward? Yeah, I mean, year to year, teams are totally different. I mean, it's kind of hard to keep the same team together in the NFL, especially. Um, I don't know. I hope we could get back to, you know, uh, same close team we had this, this last year. But um Dave's is, I think he's a good coach, and Joe, Joe, they're all doing a good job, you know, getting players in here to change the culture. So I think the ceiling is, there's, there's really no ceiling. You know, I mean, I really think the next couple of years that we could win, we could win a lot of ball games and, you know, uh, maybe take that next step and maybe get to the Super Bowl. So. And your future, you're going to be an unrestricted free agent. I think this is the first time, if I'm not mistaken, you're facing free agency. You've always been under contract. How scary is that? And what do you, you know, what do you envision? Do you want to be back? Do you think you'll be back? Um, yeah, no, it's definitely the first time I've hit a free agency before because they signed me after my second year in the, the league coming out. Um, no, I do. I love everything about the Giants. I love the Maras. I love, I love everything about the Giants. So I, I would love to be here. Um, you know, we haven't, I haven't talked to them about anything. I don't think my agents heard anything either. So I don't really know what's going to happen. I think they would like me to be here. And I would like to be here. I'd like to be a giant my whole career. But, um, you know, things happen. But we'll see, uh, see what takes place in the next, you know, two to four weeks. So, and of course, just real quick, you, you had, you went back to playing guard this year, rotating with Ben Bredesen. I know you like to play center. If there's an opportunity on this offensive line for you to play guard, 
I I guess it's safe to say you'll you'll jump at it. Oh no no de- no definitely I uh I'd rather be on the field than be on the bench not playing. So if I have to play guard, I got to play guard. But you know I definitely I think center is probably my best position and where I like think I provide the most uh the most offer. But uh, if I have to play guard, I'll play guard. I don't care. So Nick, before I let you go. Do you have a message you want to give to the giant fans who are listening out there? Yeah, I just want to, you know, say thank you and all the support this year. Um, we're glad we could, uh, you know, provide a product that you guys were proud of all year and, you know, help you uh, you guys celebrate and, get, you know, have fun at the games every Sunday and, you know, uh, just be proud of the product they see on the TV. So I just want to appreciate you guys and thank you so much for all the support. He's Nick Gates, the offensive lineman for the New York Giants, one of my favorite players. Nick, thank you so much for coming on with me. No problem. Thank you, Patty, for having me. All right, New York Giant fans, that's going to do it for this edition of the Locked on Giants podcast. Thank you so much to Nick Gates for coming on with me a few minutes on uh, Tuesday morning when we take this. Thank you for tuning in. We will be doing Twitter Thursday tomorrow so you still have time to get your questions in get them in and I'm going to tape the episode probably around seven o'clock on Wednesday night so that you guys have it for a midnight drop so do get your questions in and also we are going to do another episode of Locked on Giants Live with Tana and the dog as well as Trina (laughs) we can't forget about me so that episode is going to be on uh, Thursday night we will uh, have a a start time of eight o'clock. We're going to start a little bit later than usual, but we'll probably go a couple of hours like we always do. So we hope we will see you at Locked on Giants Live. So until next time, thank you so much for making the Locked on Giants your first listen of the day, or if watching on YouTube, your first watch of the day. We will see you again soon, Giant fans.